What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution XROM and this is the version 9.0 and this is of course based on Android 14, 7th June 2024 build by the way and this ROM right now definitely feels one of the most stable experiences ever and here yes some of the things are still broken like the RCS chat and stuff broken but except for that most of the things has been fixed and there are actually a lot of features that has been added with this particular update. So I'll show you each and every thing, each and every detail of this ROM. So stay tuned till the end of the video. In case you're wondering how the about section looks like, this is how it looks like. We have the Evolution X logo up top. We have the Android version as Android 14 and we have the Evolution X version as 9.0. The security patch here is still of May 5th, 2024, not quite June yet. Maybe it will be there in the future updates. And we have the stock kernel as the 5.10 kernel. The build maintainer is of course still Joe Up. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. We have the build date as 7th June 2024. Inside system, this is how it looks like right now. We also get the system updater still and you can check for updates. Whenever there is a newer one, it will show up right here. Let me go back in the button section. We have these kind of things like the age long swipe action and stuff. You can customize from right here. Then we have the long press power button toggle torch. Also, we have the automatically turn off torch options. Then we have the control playback, keyboard cursor control, and the click to partial screenshot. All these things are present right here inside buttons. Also, here we get the system profiles. You can actually create a particular profile if you want to. Let me go back in the gestures. We have the quick tap action. So the back tap feature is actually there. If I do it right now, as you can see, it shows quick tap detected. So you can actually customize it between these many options. I'll just turn it off for the time being. We have the quick loop and camera option that works inside navigation mode in the gesture settings we have the navigation hint then the back gesture animation haptic and we have the ime button space then we have the pill length and radius customization with the fullest options this is how it looks like the pill bar we have the back gesture height and we have the swipe to invocation and the hold handle to search both are working fine with gemini i'll show you that we have the left edge right edge customization and we have the two button and three button customization right here one handed mode also is working fine we have the left to check phone as well and there is right now show ambient option it is actually working flawlessly but we also have the press and hold power button action then the swipe click screenshot is of course there there is the share edit delete google lens and even the capture mode feature will appear whenever it's needed we have the double tap to check phone as well and we have the prevent ringing let's talk about the home screen a little bit this is how it looks like i have customized it this way and here everything just seems like pretty flawless i would say like every tap and stuff everywhere you go the animations everywhere it's just body smooth experience no problems whatsoever that i have faced at least that i can say the widget section stuff everything is there yes the battery widget i don't know why it's not appearing the bluetooth battery so i just turned off and turned on bluetooth and after that as you can see the battery widget is actually working fine i can tap here to go into the phone's battery settings and in here we can go into the headphones battery settings so this is great it is actually working fine and the bluetooth headsets and all everything is working great no need to worry other widgets like the clock widget and stuff everything is working fine and the animations of them are just buttery smooth everywhere no issues whatsoever that i have faced the wallpaper that i have been using over here is from the ai wall art wallpaper i'll link it below now one of the most important feature for me at least was the app lock and right now the app lock has been added let me actually go into the more settings and show you here we are getting the app lock right here so that's really great and in case if you want to see the settings of it we have the auto lock timeout and all so you can actually use the app lock from right here we can also use this hide developer status for particular apps if they are not working with the developer options turned on talking about that as you can see i have locked the telegram app and right now i can just tap the fingerprint scanner and that's how you can actually unlock your lock tap so yes app lock and all everything is working great no need to worry also let me show you a couple of things like if i open twitter and here if i just swipe up from the corners as you can see gemini is actually working fine here if you want to go into the circle to search kind of thing here i will just tap and hold and i can make a circle and as you can see it just selects the particular photo so that's really nice let me actually give you the demo of the translate kind of feature here with the gemini and here i'll just hold the pill bar it will bring the circle to search kind of thing and if i hit the translate as you can see it just translates the text of the screen over the photo itself so that is really nice that we are still getting all of these features working perfectly fine and the gemini is actually working great right now it doesn't actually force close or anything whenever you tap anywhere so this is nice 
Inside security, this is how it looks like. We have the device controls right here. In the settings of it, we have the scramble pin layout, enhanced pin privacy, lock screen timeout and stuff. Also in the fingerprint and face unlock option, we have the face unlock right here. I'll set it up later, but we also have the fingerprint option and in here we have the touch to unlock. If I disable that, I will have to press on the power button only then it will scan for the fingerprint. I'll set up the face unlock later, but first let me show you by double tapping on the status bar, it goes to sleep. And here, if I just show you the pickup gesture, as you can see, the pickup gesture is actually working flawlessly. I can just double tap to wake and that too is working fine. And tapping on the fingerprint scanner, it unlocks. Now I'll just turn on the always on display. And here, if I just double tap, always on display looks great. And from here, I can just unlock and just look at the animation, how beautiful it looks. There is no choppiness at all. Everywhere, it just feels so smooth. I have to say here, the experience overall of daily driving this from it's a breeze. Now, even from here, if I just go into the lock screen and if I just try to unlock, just notice the animation over here, how smooth it is. So everywhere you will feel smoothness in this particular ROM. Set up the face unlock right now. And here inside face unlock option, these are the options that you will get. But you don't have the swipe up to unlock, but I'll just try how it works. Let me actually show you. So yes, it just straight up unlocks. As you can see, if I just double tap to wake and point the device towards my face, it just straight up unlocks. Let me just double tap to sleep. And if I just double tap to wake as you can see again it unlocks so yes there is no swipe up to unlock but face unlock it's just very really fast in case you want to use it you can swiping down we'll get to the quick setting panel and this is how it looks like you can edit and add even more toggles let me show you the toggles that i have added i have the wi-fi mobile data separately and we have the bluetooth toggle the flashlight google home controls auto rotate and we have the screen recorder and right now we have these both options like the single app and the entire screen option for the recording also we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time and we have the other features like the show touches on screen and stuff hevc recording etc and we also have the dark theme the night light and we have the always on display quick share fps info and all fps is actually going above 110 115 plus so yes 120 fps is actually working fine we have the airplane mode the do not disturb hotspot data server qr code scanner and stuff all these things so you can add whichever toggles you want to also talking about the stock apps of course we still have the google dialer and all and the google messaging app everything is working great except for the rcs chat and google messages volte calling and all is working fine and also inside call recording inside the google dialer we have the play audio instead of the disclaimer so it will give you only a beep while you are recording with the google dialer and the other party cannot really notice that you are recording the call most of the time in case if you are wondering about the 5G speeds, as you can see, the 5G is actually working perfectly fine here. Talking about basic stuff, if you check the play integrity checker and here you will notice we have the device integrity and the basic integrity both. Banking apps are actually working fine for me at least. No issues that I have faced with the banking apps. In Play Store, it actually shows device is certified. So that's a nice thing. Also, the IR Blast chart here is actually working fine, as you can see. And you are getting right out of the box Google Photos unlimited backup over here. So that's a nice feature to have. Inside lock screen, we still get the Android 14 kind of lock screen clock styles. Looks great, I would say. And all of them you can use. I have been using it with this one. And inside apps, we still have the cloned apps option. So dual apps feature is actually working great. You can use two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook, whatever you want to. Inside battery settings, this is how it looks like. Let me talk about the battery life here. The battery life that I have been getting, it's really amazing over here. Now, first, let me talk about the settings. We have the thermal profiles right here. So you can set per apps thermal profile to like benchmark and other stuff like the performance mode. And we have the other modes, as you can see from here. We have the charging control as well. We also have the battery information. And right here, we have the cycle count on the bottom. For me, the device battery cycle is showing as 455 and we have the maximum capacity as 86 percent we can also see the battery temperature and all with the voltage and all now let me talk about the battery life well with the Aku battery app i have tested it with and i have been using for like weeks the rom i have been updating and all these are all estimated numbers but the screen on time that i'm getting it's about eight and a half hours or even more than that and even the screen off or the standby time you can notice it's about 47 hours so definitely more than two days and we have the combined use for about 15 hours it shows in the health section for me the battery health shows up as 87 percent and the fast charging and all everything is working great the battery saver here actually saves a lot of batteries so if you're using battery saver you will definitely get nine and a half hours of screen on time or more than that pretty sure now let me talk about the stock camera well you are still getting the poco camera right out of the box and you will get the options right here if you just swipe down in the photo mode normally 
and we have the video mode as well and as you can see ultra wide angle lens and the 1x 2x all the options are working great but with the like rear camera video you can go up to 4k and 30 fps there is no 60 fps option for 4k but if you want 60 fps you have to switch to 20p and 60 fps over here there is documents mode there is pro mode you can also shoot videos with the pro mode and all and here let me actually show you the portrait mode it's also working fine so all the modes basically are working fine as you can see the front camera and all everything is working great the picture quality here is pretty much decent and you can see the samples from the sides of the screen swiping up will get you even more options like the panorama short frame slow motion etc yes it doesn't have 4k 60 fps video but if you want 4k 60 fps video you can get a gcam i'll list a gcam video in the description i have installed this particular gcam it is working great for me and here with the video again you can switch to 4k and 60 fps right here so again you can see the gcam installation guide from the description box below in the sound and vibration settings these are all the options that you will get and here we also have the volume steps and stuff then if you just scroll down more we have the smart pause now playing vibration and haptics for the whole ui is there and just notice the amount of vibration options present over here let me go back we have the dial per tone screen locking sound charging sound and stuff we also have the dolby atmos and you can actually change the equalizer presets we have the surround visualizer studio widening and we also have the dialogue enhancer as well Base enhancer, volume leveler, all these kind of functionalities are there. Also, you can change the profile to dynamic movie, music, video, or voice. There is a clear speaker option as well. You can use it if you want to. Per app volume control is also there. And the volume panel actually looks like this. You can actually expand the volume panel and like get into the volume output switcher, just like this. And you can switch the volume output from right here. Inside the display settings, we also have the adaptive brightness right now. And I think it is working. Let me actually show you if I just decrease the brightness. And if I just enable the adaptive or auto brightness and try to cover the top part of the screen, it doesn't do anything as of right now. But yeah, I think the adaptive or auto brightness is actually working right now, as you can see. Inside lock screen settings, we have the privacy controls, the device controls and stuff. And we have the now playing and all. Always what I mean for is the always on display. We have the music ticker, then the lift to check phone is there. Wake screen for notification is there. The screen timeout is there up to 30 minutes. There is also the screen attention and we have the dark theme right here and there is a pure black mode as well i have been using it with a pure black mode no issues with it and we have the night light right here and you can change the intensity if you want to then we have the live display mode and the color calibration options are there as well reading mode and stuff you can enable and inside colors i have been using it with the saturated but you can also use it with the original p3 it's a gb all these kind of options and right now there is the peak refresh rate option up to 120 hertz you can also switch it to 90 hertz in case you want to and we have the minimum and maximum refresh rate changing option right here low power refresh rate you can also switch it to 90 hertz if you want to for some reason but with 60 hertz in low power it will save more battery we also have the double tap to wake double tap to sleep wake up on plug and the per app refresh rate options right here and per app you can actually switch it to 60 or 120 hertz there is no 90 hertz option per app now let's talk performance well here in the chrome and stuff i have the test for website opened and just notice i have it on like 100 plus fps running doesn't show you 120 fps for some reason but yes 100 plus fps i'm getting over here but overall in the ui it feels 120 hertz definitely i have to say here like if i open twitter and here if i just start scrolling just notice how smooth it is everywhere it feels buttery smooth no issues whatsoever i can go home and i can just switch to any other app no problems that i have seen even in play store let me just switch from different apps as you can see so overall the like performance experience it's just really good and let me actually show you if i just do the split screen mode and here also everything it's just smooth enough in my opinion and everywhere i feel the whole ui stays very smooth no problems i can just go home and reopen both of the apps together so all these functionalities are working great no issues that i have faced so overall in terms of daily driving performance it has been faring me really well and here are the performance benchmarks that I have tested in this particular build. Inside the Evolver, of course, you will get the customizations and they are pretty much huge. We have the monitor settings and stuff. I'll just give you a glimpse of the customization. We have the theme style and all right here. Themes, we still get the system fonts and 100 plus fonts are there, I guess. And we have the locks and clock fonts. These are the older Android 13 kind of locks and clock styles. You can use them if you want to. And we have the system icon styles and these are the options. Even the icon shapes are there. Just notice the amount of options. And then we have the signal icon styles. Also the Wi-Fi icon styles navigation bar styles brightness rider styles 
Also, we have the screen of animation. Let me go back inside lock screen. We have the charging stats, ripple effect animation, and we have the pocket addiction and all. And we also have the status bar brightness control, then the quick pull down and stuff. Then the status bar tuner option is there. And we have the clock and date customization. Also, we have the battery style. Right now, we still get the iOS 16 style and all. Earlier, it has been removed, all of these kind of things. But right now, we are still getting all of the like huge amount of customization of the battery style. Even the battery percentage option is there. And we have the Wi Fi standards, colored icons, network traffic indicator, notification count, and the microphone and camera privacy icons. We have the screen prediction. And the battery bar option is also there. You can use it if you want to. We have the quick setting panel customization. You can change the quick setting panel style to square color and all. We have the quick setting panel, the whole style changing option. The thin line and all is there. We have the height level, then the height level text, vertical layout, and all of these things. And we have the brightness slider position changing option. You can put it to bottom. And we have the floating clear all button. Also, we have the secured lock screen kind of thing. So let me actually show you. If I go into the lock screen, I cannot really open the power menu right now. I have customized it that way. And I cannot really swipe down and like switch off the device or open the power menu or turn off Wi Fi or anything like that. So those things are simply not possible. I have to unlock. So this is really a very good security kind of feature, I would say. So if your phone is going on into a theft kind of situation, it will be helpful. The thief can only restart the device by holding the power button. That too, it will restart normally into the system. Inside notifications, we have the edge lighting, the eyelid notification and all, and you can disable the now playing, so it doesn't become annoying. We have the alert when display is on and stuff. Then we have the power menu customization, and inside we have the device controls, the advanced reboot, everything. So let me show you the power menu looks like this. If I tap on restart, I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. We have the show on secured lock screen option. I have disabled that. Buttons customization, we have the layout and the invert layout option. Inside miscellaneous, we have the component spoofing, and here we get the play integrity fix. Integrity fix values, pixel props, storage encryption, high FPS in grains, and we have the Snapchat poof, etc. Let me go back. We have the allow application downgrade and the ignore window secure flags. So you get these amount of customization right now in this ROM, and they are pretty much huge in my opinion. So what do I think about the latest Evolution XROM on the Poco F5 and how it's running? Overall, in my experience, I would say this is one of the best daily driver experience that I have been getting at least on this particular ROM. Everywhere it just feels like home and everywhere it just feels like straight butter. Overall experience of like opening and closing apps and all. So I would say overall experience of daily driving this ROM has been great for me. And I can definitely recommend to you guys to flash this ROM and try it out if you love stock Android kind of experience. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share this video with your friends. If you want them to give a really stock Androidish experience with a lot of customizations and all, this is definitely one of the best ROMs out there to try on the Poco A5 in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.